Okay, uh, today we are going to talk about uh, shear stress in a beam. Okay, so generally we have we will uh, we have two uh, kind of um, beams. One is with a rect rectangle cross section, the other one with a circular cross section. So in this section, we will focus on rectangle cross section. Okay. Okay, so um, if you have um, two beams, okay, we have this block, right? If you put another block together, then we will perform bending. The first case, you know, we glue, glue them together, okay? So we put the two beams together and we glue together. So this, there's a glue right in between. Then we'll give a, um, a load. You know, this beam is not ready, right? It will deform. It will deform like this. The lens for the top one and the lens for the second one, they are exactly the same, right? So, you know, there's no delamination, so they will deform together. Okay, so this is one case. Second case, you just stack these two beams together, okay? So, no glue. Then you will give a load, okay? It will deform like this. Okay. So then, okay, finally the end will be, they are not even, okay? So, kind of, you know, um, if you, this is uh, two beams, right? But how about one beam? So if you have just a one beam, right? So that means, you know, from this one to this one, so there's just a one beam, right? From, then it will, finally the shape will be like this. So that means, okay, you have shear stress, you have shear stress in between beams. Or if you have one beam, one beam that's, that means you have internal shear stress in it. So then you have, you know, kind of the top beam and the second beam, they have the same end, right? So that means, you know, you have shear stress in it. Okay, so in this uh, section, we will discuss, okay, how to figure out the shear stress. If we just, uh, uh, we have one beam, we give a load, right? So it will deform, right? There's a uh, neutral surface, right? So this is the neutral surface. There's a shear stress in it. So we just uh, take one item out, okay? So this is only dx. So then we draw it here. We enlarge it, right? So this is a one item.
Okay, this is a neutral surface. Okay, we know neutral surface, there's no normal stress, right? So the distribution of the uh, normal stress will be like this. under compression, bottom under tension, right. So then this one we have normal stress sigma 1, this one we have sigma 2. This side the binding moment is m, this side the binding moment is m plus yeah. Right. So we call it one side uh, item not. So in previous section, we talked about, okay, we can calculate the normal stress is equal to, okay, if we, you know, we just uh, want to analyze uh, the, third, the shear stress on this surface. On this surface. Okay. We take it out, so we draw it. We want to analyze. We want to analyze the shear stress right. Like you know, we have shear stress, right? Because we have shear stress, then the top beam and the bottom beam they have the, the surface overlap each other, right? So like we give a random surface, we want to analyze shear stress there. So okay, let's assume we just analyze it there. So then the distance from this surface to the neutral surface is y1. Okay. So now we cut it out. So we know the normal. There's a relationship between finding moment and normal stress, right? So it will be equal to so sigma two will be oh, the moment is. So, okay, so this one just for a certain point, right? So the, okay, if we talk about this, okay, what's the, if we have shear stress in this surface, right? That means that there's a, a shear, shear load, right? So then we have this stress, if we talk about, okay, the total force, okay? So the, this shear force, we have shear stress, right? But then we have shear force. So the shear force, Results from, okay, we have a load here, and we have a load here, because there's a difference, right? This difference will be the shear force. So now we have shear stress. We have expression for shear stress. Now, the shear, the load, the total load here, we define as F1. The total load here, on this surface, we define as F2. So now, F1 will be, okay, we just analyze one element, right? We need to uh, consider all uh, uh, 
all elements in the surface. Okay, so it will be equal to oh, this one F one, right? So then F one will be So we can take a moment and the moment measure of similarly. Okay, this is the load on the uh, on the le uh, left, right? So I have two moments uh, is equal to this. So we can take a moment off. Right, so how this. So this is, F1 is the total load on this surface. F2 is the total load on the right surface. Okay, then we can define this F3 is a sure false, right? So F3 will be equal to F2 minus F1, right? So definitely you can use uh, F1 uh, minus F1. Uh, minus, uh, uh, F2, okay. So it will be equal to Okay, F3, if we define this direction, okay, it's to be equal to F1 minus F2, okay. So this, F1 push this direction, F3, the net is the direction, right? So, actually, there's no difference, okay. So it will be... Minus... So it will be equal to this one plus, right? So I separate them. Okay, so they are same, right? Negative, positive, so they cancel each other. Now we have the shear force is equal to this one. Okay, so this is a shear force, right? Okay, now the shear force, we have this one. So like, you know, I bend this, um, uh, I bend this uh, block. Right, so I bend this block. So that's a sure force at any surface, right? Um, so um, if we define the shear stress, it's called the total shear stress. Kind of okay, this direction, right? So the total shear shear if we have the shear stress, then the total shear force will be will be what? So shear force F3 will be the shear stress multiplied by area, right? So the area will be area will be uh, okay. So we bend this one, okay? So the uh, we cut one element out. So then the area will be this is a shear stress, right? So. So we cut one element out. So, uh, cause we are, we are only in terms of one element, right? So we cut one element out. 
should try to go beyond this one. So this is the, the way this is the dx, right? Okay, so this is the dx, right? So the area will be this area. So uh, then it will be b uh, multiplied by dx. Okay, so we have this one. Okay, so this one, the shear force we calculate here, so they are equal, right? So that means tau b is dx is equal to Okay, now shear force will be equal to dx divided by dx. Uh, this one, right? So we know that the derivative of a moment, bending moment, will be equal to shear force, right? So we know this guy. Is equal to shear force. So that means shear stress is equal to shear force divided by Okay, we'll have this one, right? So kind of this one is a little bit annoying, right? So we can simplify it. Okay, we define Q is equal to this one. So Q is what? Q is first a moment. Okay. Okay, Q is first a moment. So now we can rewrite that the shear stress will be equal to So in this one, okay, this one is shear force, right? So this one is first moment. So this one is moment of nature, right? So this one is width. So this is uh, a uh, shear stress, right? Now, okay, we want to calculate, okay? Uh, kind of, okay, we, we can calculate this one. We, can, we know this uh, width, we can, we can calculate the shear, uh, shear force at any point in your beam, right? So now let's solve this um, uh, first moment. <coughs> So we know the cross-section is right angle, right? We know this one is the width is B. Total this is a neutral surface. This one H over Q. Okay, so we have we, we just uh, want to analyze shear stress here, right? So we integrate from here to here to the surface, right? So this one is a y1. Right. So let's see how to uh, uh, integrate this, uh, this first moment. Okay. So this first moment will be, will be, uh, the area, okay, if the uh, area will be, so this is, uh, we just integrate it this way, right? So, um, so this is a small element, right? Small element. So dA will be equal to, okay, so Q is equal to, Okay, if this one is dy. If this one is dy. Okay, 
So D A will be equal to the wave, right? Multiplied by D Y, right? It will be the individual area, right? So it will be equal to G D Y. Okay, so then for some moment, because you know we want to analyze sure uh, stress here, so we integrate from here to, to the top surface, right? So that means we we need to integrate from y1 to h over 2. So y dA is equal to this one, right? Okay. So then this b a is a constant. So we take it off y1 h over q y d y. So now, for some moment, will be equal. Okay, I write down here. So integrate will be b y one. So it will be equal to. So this is a first moment expression, okay? And uh, then we can re okay, we have shear stress expression right there, right? So now shear stress will be equal to, this is really important, right? So we uh, multiply by this shear and also we have IB. And we, the B, they will cancel each other, right? So now we have a really neat result. Okay, so this is the shear stress expression, okay? So that means, okay, this one, the shear stress is equal to the shear force. So if you have beams, no matter what kind of beam, right? So if you have cantilever, you have a simple beam, you have a simple beam with a, uh, with a overhang, right? So you give a load, you give a moment. So we are we need we can calculate the reaction force here and here, then we can calculate the shear force at any point in the beam, right? So this is shear force. Moment of nature, because it's a rectangle cross section, right? So we know that moment of nature will be equal to this one, right? So we can if we know the dimension B and the uh, height, so we can calculate the moment of nature. So this is the height of the cross section, right? This Y1, remember Y1 is really important. Y1 is the, the surface you want to calculate shear stress there, right? This, the distance of this surface to the neutral surface, okay? So Y1 means distance of certain surface, right? To neutral surface, this is really important, okay? So again, this is your neutral surface, right? There's no normal stress. So this is uh, the distance of the surface you want to calculate the shear stress there to the neutral surface. This is the y one. So this one is a general formula to calculate shear stress at any point in your beam. Okay. Let me give you guys uh, uh, two examples. Okay, before that, um, we want to understand, okay, what's the maximum shear stress will be, right? So in this one, we know that uh, in the neutral surface, the normal stress will be equal to zero, okay? Surface, we have maximum normal stress, right? But you know, for this one, it's a general formula, okay? But if we, care, we, just, uh, we just care about the maximum shear stress 
then we can know okay whether the beam will be broken or not, right? So what's the maximum? What's the maximum shear stress? Okay, I write down this one again. So in this expression, okay, to make a, to have the maximum shear stress, so that means we have to assume y1 has to be equal to zero, right? Okay, now we have the maximum shear stress will be equal to will be equal to this one, right? Okay, so we may think, okay, we, can, we want to uh, simplify again, right? So we know the moment nature for the rectangle cross-section is equal to this one, right? So then we replace moment nature uh, here, right? So now the maximum shear stress will be equal to uh, Sure, false divided by 2, multiplied by 12. So then we have this one, 3, this one will be gone. So this one will be gone, so this one will be only 1, right? So it will be equal to. You have this one. And the B multiplied by height is what? It's a cross section area, right? So, cross section. So, A is equal to BH. Now we have maximum shirt stress. It is a really neat result, right? So, if you have a, okay, you 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 need to okay this one just for rectangle cross section, okay. We will talk about circular cross section. It will be a diff, it will be in a different form. So for a rectangle cross section, you know, then the maximum shear stress will be three times shear force divided by two times cross section area. Okay, so this is a really important result. Okay, now let's see how uh, the maximum shear stress will be at which location. So that means, okay, we was, when y1 is equal to zero, okay, kind of, you know, we are talking about here, right? So the maximum shear stress will be on the neutral surface. It's kind of opposite to the normal stress, right? For the normal stress, neutral surface has nothing, right? There's no normal stress on in the neutral surface. The normal stress, you know, the maximum normal stress will be on the surface. For shear stress, okay, neutral surface has the maximum shear stress, right? Surface, there's no shear stress. Okay, so uh, now uh, let me give you guys two examples. So I write down this uh, two important equation here. So generally, okay, for shear stress at any point will be will be uh, this one, right? And also the maximum shear stress. So be careful. This one just a full rectangle cross section, okay? Okay, just for rectangle cross section. 
OK. The first example is on page number 486. OK, so we have a simple beam. We can uh, we can draw it a lot uh, because we we need to differentiate the location. Right? We can draw it larger. We have this symbol beam. and this symbol beam has uniformly load uh, uniformly load. So Q is equal to 160 pounds per inch. And uh, the height is 4 inch, right? So I draw the cross section here. The width is one inch. This is uh, four inch. It's a neutral surface. Okay. Cut it down a little bit. Okay. So height is four inch. Width is one inch. Yeah, it's one inch. And also, uh, let me see any others. Okay, the total span length is uh, 36 inch. Okay, we have a special point. We want to calculate uh, the point there, the shear stress and normal stress there, okay? There's a, a special We have a special point C. Okay, so the distance of point C to left end, oh sorry, to right end, okay, is 8 inch. Okay, and the point C is 1 inch below the surface. So half will be 2 inch, right? Point C will be 1 inch below, that means here, okay. It's a point C. So we have special point C in the beam, okay? Because you know for that, for this one, right, we can calculate the shear stress at any point, right? So this is the special point. Again, the location of point C is 80 inch to the right hand. One inch below the surface. And the question is, <clears throat> what's the normal stress at point C? What's the shear stress at point C, right? So now you need to think about how to calculate the normal stress, how to calculate shear stress. If we want to calculate normal stress, shear stress, we need to know what, right? So we learned in uh, previous uh, section, we know the normal stress right, is equal to, this is a general formula for the normal stress, right? And today we talk, we learned, okay, the shear stress will be equal to shear force, because this is uh, just a uh, reg uh, uh, regular, uh, you know, a random point, right? So we use this a general formula, okay? Okay, so let's uh, talk about this one first. So apparently for Y here, Y means, for the normal stress, right? Y means distance to the neutral surface. 
So this is your neutral surface, right? So distance to the top, top, you know, the half height is two inch. Distance to the top is one inch. That means distance to the neutral surface will be one inch as well, right? So y is one inch. Okay, we need uh, to know more than nature, right? So we can calculate the first. It's a rectangle, so we use this one. So this one should be B is one inch, right? Height is uh, four inch. So this one will be uh, 16 or 3 times. So we, we calculate like uh, if you have this problem in the uh, middle exam or final exam, you can calculate this one first, right? To claim the point back first. Okay, now the last problem we need to know, okay, what's the moment at point C, right? So similarly, this one, okay, we know Y1 is equal to 1 inch, right? Distance to the neutral surface. H is equal to uh, 4 inch, right? So moment nature, we already have it. So it's equal to 16 over 3. So that means we need to know what's the shear force at point C, right? So you can see calculation of bending moment and shear force uh, is really important, right? So we, we learned this in chapter 4. Okay, I believe you guys are experts right now. You can calculate the uh, 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 moment and the shear force. So apparently, if, if we want to calculate the shear force and bending moment, we need to calculate the reaction force at A and B, right? Because this beam has a uh, uniformly due force. So it's a symmetric, right? So each one will take half. So that means you can write down this one directly. Each one will take half. The total load will be 160 multiplied by total length, right? Total length is 36. Each one will take half, right? So it will equal this one. Um, this one will be... Twenty-eight eighty pound. Okay. Now, the moment at point C. Okay. Uh, you can use a uh, 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 left segment or you can use right segment. Okay. So I want to use the right segment, right? So I draw it here. So this one will be eight inch. So this is uh, on RB. Right? And we have a uniform due force here, so it can be regarded as a point load, right? So it will be in the middle. So we name it as P. P will be equal to, okay, we just uh, we can see just uh, this load only, right? So it will be Q multiplied by 8. Okay, now we have it. We want to calculate. We want to calculate shear force at point C. Right, C is here. Right? What's the bending moment at point C? Right. Okay. So now let's calculate shear force C first. P is clockwise. Clockwise is positive, right? It's Q multiplied by eight. RB counterclockwise minus RB. So it will be 16 multiplied by 8 minus 28, 80, right? So it will be equal to 17, uh, 17,920 pounds. Oh no, a sure false, okay, sorry. Sure false is equal to uh, a negative 1600. Huh. Okay, so this sure false. And the bending moment, uh, I write down here. So this one, uh, the RB will burn out, right? Hold water, so it will be positive. 
arm will be 8. This one will dump water, right? So Q multiplied by 8, arm will be half, right? So multiply by 8, you have that Q. So this one is, uh, is uh, 700, uh, 17,920. Okay, now we have uh, shear force and body moment, right? Uh, we can calculate uh, the uh, normal stress and shear stress. So, uh, normal stress will be equal to moment is equal to 17,920 pounds in, right? Y is equal to 1 in, divided by moment ratio is 16 cubic inch, right? So this number will be negative 33 uh, 160 psi. Okay, so negative means you know uh, compressive uh, stress, right? So like you know, when the because the beam is uh, is uh, under this uniform due force, right? So this is a neutral surface because this point is above the neutral surface. So then the beam will bend like this way, right? So the top the top part will be under uh, compression. So that's why you have uh, negative, okay. Uh, so this is a normal stress. So let's see the shear stress. At point C is equal to what do we have? Shear force is equal to uh, negative 1600. You have at 2 times 16 or 3. So we have uh, H is equal to 4 square you have uh, Four, y one is equal to one. So this one will be equal to four hundred fifty uh, psi. Okay, generally, okay, for the shear stress, okay, if you define this this direction is a positive, then the other direction will be negative. So uh, the sign here. Uh, doesn't matter, okay? So you can, if you want, you can just uh, use a, a positive 1600, you know, uh, a pound to calculate this uh, shear stress. It will be positive 450 PSI, okay? That's okay. Uh, and also, this one is, uh, you can keep it or you can ignore it, that's, that's fine. You know, if you have a negative sign there, that means a compressive, uh, uh, it's the, the part that is under uh, compressive, right? Under compression. Okay, so this is the first example. Again, so when we calculate the normal stress, we want to calculate shear stress. So for the normal stress, we need to look for the bending moment. For the shear stress, we need to look for the, uh, the shear force. Okay, so you can calculate the other stuff, you know, like uh, the distance to the neutral surface, the moment in the uh, So you can claim that point first. Okay, so let me give you another example. So this one is. Um, is you know kind of what's a, a log load in a beam, okay? So this one we have um, we have a simple beam. Uh, we have a two-point load, okay? I think we have this one in the homework, okay? So it's symmetric load, okay? The distance to the to the left of this load, P, P, is a 0.5 meter. The distance of this load is 0.5 meter as well. 
So the cross section is a rectangle as well. The height is uh, 150, the waist is 100. And also we know the allowable normal stress is equal to 11 microparticles. And also shear stress is equal to 1.2 microparticles. So this is a, uh, kind of you, when you select the material, you know the allowable stress, you know the shear stress, right? Allowable shear stress. And also you want to have this uh, dimension. Now, once you have this beam, okay, kind of we want to know what's the maximum load we can apply in case the beam is broken right, or heavily deformed. So how to analyze this problem, how to solve this problem? Okay, so we know this allowable normal stress, or allowable shear stress, right? So um, based on this equation, that means if we know the shear stress, we can figure out okay the maximum shear force, right? Based on this allowable normal stress, we can figure out the maximum bending moment. So that means when you have a maximum shear force, definitely shear force can, is related to this load applied, right? Maximum bending moment is related to this. Uh, apply load as well. So that means now, based on that the concept, we can figure out okay, the load uh, range, right? So then uh, we need to figure out, okay, in this beam, so what's the maximum, which, in which region or at what point it has the maximum shear stress and uh, maximum bending moment, right? So if you remember, we have this homework problem, right? The shear force diagram will be like this. First, okay, because it's a symmetric load, okay, that means the reaction force, each one, each point, each support, just a response for uh, its closed load, right? So that means RA will be equal to P, RB will be equal to P as well, right? Then, when x is between 0 and 0 0.5, it will be equal to p only, right? So clockwise, positive. Then when you reach in this region, that means these this two kill each other, so there's no shear force. And back to here, okay, this is a counterclockwise, so it will be negative p, right? So then the shear force will be like this. Shear force background will be like this. This is a shear force diagram, right? So this one, 0 0.5. Uh, if the total length is L, this L minus 0.5. This one is uh, L, right? So this one will be P, this one will be negative P, right? And also we know the moment, uh, the moment diagram. So in this region, okay, so it will RA um, multiplied by X. So it will be linear. Then it will be a constant. I don't know whether you guys still remember that value. That value will be P A here will be 0.5 P, right? Because A is equal to 0.5. Why? So I can demonstrate, okay? 
So no question here, right? The moment R, the moment will be P, uh, uh, P, uh, this one will be P multiplied by this R will be uh, P A, right? So why you have a constant here, okay? So if we define this is X, right? So one X larger than 0.5, less than L minus 0.5. So we use a left segment. So moment will be R A multiplied by X. This is a this is a hold water, right? This is a mm, dumb water, right? For this one. So it will minus P multiplied by X minus 0.5, right? The R will be this one, X minus 0.5. So R A will be equal to P X minus P X plus the p multiplied by 0.5 so then you have 0.5 p, right? so that's why you have a constant okay, for this uh, classical, you know uh, sure fault diagram, bending moment diagram you can, you can try to uh, memorize it, okay now can we, can we know the uh, the maximum sure fault and the maximum bending moment? yes, right? so uh, max, maximum sure fault will be equal to p Maximum bending moment will be 0.5 of P, or you can write P over T, right? Okay. Uh, for the um, allowable stress, so we know we can use this one, right? The maximum shear stress is equal to maximum bending moment divided by section modulus. So the general formula is like this, right? Okay, so we can rewrite it. This one, right? So, section modulus for this cross section, uh, uh, rectangle cross section will be. So it will be equal to uh, 100 multiplied by 150 square divided by 6 millimeter power 4, right? A uh, power 3. So this one should be. Okay, so this one should uh, should be twenty five. Okay, should be this one. So now we have uh, a lot of stress is equal to eleven megapascal, right? It's equal to uh, moment that is equal to p divided by this second model. So now we can get the, we name uh, P1. Okay, because we can get another one, right? This one will be equal to 8.25 kilonewton. Okay, so this, uh, uh, based on the allowable normal stress, we get uh, uh, a, a load, right? So based on the shear force, allowable shear stress. Right? So then we can use this one, right? Because we are we use the maximum one. So maximum shear stress is equal to three times uh, shear force divided by two times area, right? So the shear stress uh, is the one point two megapascal. Right? Three times the shear force is equal to oh this one okay this one's moment right so p over two be careful and the result is uh, it's uh, point two five okay so shear force is equal to p area will be uh, hundred and nano uh, uh, millimeter multiplied by hundred and fifty millimeter right. So then we have P2 is equal to 
how a kilo newton. So now we have two low, right? P1 is equal to 8.25 kilo newton. P2 is equal to 12 kilo newton. So that means the final result will be the minimal one, right? If you give this load. So now, if you give a larger load, then, you know, it will not satisfy that uh, requirement. So that means the minimum, the maximum load will be the minimum load you, you get here. So this is the, uh, the example problem, kind of, you know, uh, you know the allowable uh, normal strength stress stress, we can calculate the allowable load, right? Or if you know the allowable load, you know the uh, materials, then you can calculate the dimension, right? What the, the weight should be, what the height should be, right? So we can, we can design. Uh, so this is a shear stress in a, a beam with a rectangle cross-section. So next time I will talk about the uh, shear stress in a, a beam with a circular cross-section. Okay, so let's uh, talk about the last uh, section in chapter 5. It's uh, uh, shear stress in a beam with a uh, circular cross section. So we have a circular cross section. The diameter is equal to D. Okay, so we know the moment measure. For uh, circular cross section is equal to this one, and uh, we can use the radius to express it, right? So d is equal to two times r. So then, moment measure will be equal to pi. Will be equal to pi 16 or 4 divided by 16. So this one will be equal to pi r or 4 divided by 4, right? And also we know the general formula for the maximum. The general uh, uh, formula for the uh, uh, ma maximum shear stress will be. So if you have a certain cross section, the first moment will be equal to okay, and also for the circular cross section, we define B as equal to two R. This is diameter. Okay, based on what we have here and there, we can rewrite the maximum shear stress. Is equal to shear force multiplied by moment measure is equal to pi So now we can reorganize it. So two two will be gone, right? So this one will be gone. Mm, that's it, right? So we have in the uh, we have this four modulated by four pi r square, right? So pi r square will be equal to the cross section area, right? And then. Maximum shear stress will be equal to four times shear uh, for three times cross section area, right? So this is really important result. It's really neat. So like if you have a circular cross section, it's a solid, right? Then we have the maximum shear stress will be four times shear force divided by uh, three times cross section area. Right? So once we write down this solid cross section, right, we may have a hollow tube, right? Hollow cross section. 
That one will be a little bit more complicated, right? So this is a hollow tube. This one is R1. This one is R2. Okay, hollow, hollow process. Okay, for this uh, uh, solid one, we can maximum shear stress is equal to four times shear force to S three times cross section area. For the uh, for the hollow one, okay, the maximum shear stress is equal to four times shear force to S three times cross section area, and also we have uh, another stuff. It's equal to R one square plus R one R two plus R2 square divided by R1 square plus R2 square. Okay, this is a long result. So this uh, uh this uh the shear stress in your beam with uh, solid cross section, uh, solid circular cross section and hollow circular uh, hollow circular cross section, okay? The shear stress. Again, for the rectangle cross section, we know that. For the rectangle, right? So we know, okay, the maximum shear stress will be equal to 3 times shear force divided by 2 times cross section area, right? And also, we can calculate shear stress at any point is equal to this one, right? So this is a general formula for the uh, rectangle cross section, right? So this is uh, you know the shear stress in a beam, no matter with a rectangle cross section or with a solid circular cross section or with a hollow circular cross section, we are able to calculate the shear stress, right? So um, this this uh, problem uh, I will not give you in the uh, middle exam and also for the final exam. You may see. Uh, rectangle and also you may see this uh, circular one. Okay.